Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney, still in a construction zone. Look at my lovely drywall, <laughs> but not finished wall. Um, hopefully they finish up this week, folks. I have a lot of very important filming to do that I can't really talk to you about at all this week and um, I need my room finished <laughs> or at least finished enough for me to be able to film. So. Say some prayers that this gets finished here really quickly. Um, but for today, I have, I would normally have Lena dressed, but I wanna be able to talk about the pants are the big part of this, and so I wanna be able to show you some up close stuff. So I don't have them on Lena today. Um, but I've done the first so the look of the um, ready to wear video that I put out on Friday last week. So I did 10 ready to wear looks and I paired those with fabrics and patterns and today I have a sew the look associated with one of those. So let's, without further ado, let's delve in. All right, so I'll stand right here. Sorry, I'm also standing on, they put down um, like plastic on the carpet to keep, <laughs> so if you can hear any of that like crinkly noise, it's the carpet right now. So I really apologize for the construction zone that I'm filming in right now. <laughs> We're just gonna make do. It will make the finished room so much better, right? It'll just be so much uh, a big difference. Okay, anyway, <laughs> this is the look that I wanted to recreate um, for this first Sew the Look. This is a look from Anthropology. I loved everything about it. I loved the tonal um, sweater with the pants combination with a nude shoe. Um, I loved the faux leather. I loved the shape of the pants. There was a lot that I really loved about this outfit and was very keen on recreating it. So I actually only had to make the pants for this look. So let's start with the sweater. Um, for the video that I put out last Friday, I actually gave you a pattern. Um, I can't remember, what was it called? It was called the, I think it was an Atelier jupe maybe pattern mm. i'll pop i'll pop it up um what the pattern was that i had recommended to kind of recreate this look um i also given you some fabric and stuff but i already had this sweater that was in my wardrobe and so um and there's no sense in reinventing the wheel so i've actually paired my look with this ready to wear j crew sweater that i have that is a merino spandex um mix um, it's from J. Crew. Actually, it's felted a little bit. I hand washed it, but it felted just a little bit in the washing process, but I still think it's fine. Um, and I love it. The color is just perfection. And so I still wear it all the time. And it's not shrunk. I mean, it's not felted so much that it's shrunk a lot. Um, I can just kind of tell in the texture. But anyway, <laughs> it's a sweater that I love and I will continue to wear until it just gets too pilly that I can, you know, till it wears out. So this is what I have actually paired with my look um, because I thought it went so great totally with my outfit. So the big, as I said in the Friday's video, the piece de resistance of uh, this look are definitely the pants. So um, Mimi G has spearheaded a new big, I guess big five now, um, commercial pattern company through the McCall's Pattern Company called Nomi Patterns. And it highlights a different designer for each of the patterns. And I think the first release had, I think eight patterns, was the first release of patterns, eight different designers. Um, it's just a way of showcasing some independent pattern designers through the resources that are associated with the big four. And I made up um, the last, so the look that I did was just last week, um, I made a coat with one of the Nomi patterns. I think it was uh, 2001. And um, this week is another one that I tried and also very impressed with it. This pant pattern is the Nomi, so ME2002, which is Brittany J. Jones's pattern. I love her. If you don't follow her on Instagram or YouTube, you should. She is a ray of sunshine, a breath of fresh air. She is so delightful. And um, I mean, I would have bought her pattern just to support her, but I loved the pants. Now the top that comes along with this pattern um, is more of a tunic style top, which is not a great style on my body, um, on my, my body type but it looks great on a lot of people, including my sister. Um, so definitely have a look at this pattern because it's wonderful. But the pants are particularly lovely. And we're gonna talk about those today. I knew I could recreate these pants with this pattern. And yes, the fabric and the pattern really made for, I, I'm, I just really love these pants. <laughs> they're different. You know, is this, are these something I'm gonna grab like all the time? No, but they're different and they're amazing. So this pants pattern comes with two, uh, comes in two different views and they're basically the same thing. The only difference is that uh, one of the views, I think it's, I think the pants are view C and view D, but I can't remember which is which. One of the pant views has, is kind of cropped and it's a wide leg. 
And then the other one is like an ankle pant, so it goes down a little bit longer, but it's more tapered. And the way you get that taper is by putting in these darts into the hem. So she's got these darts that go up on the front leg and on the back leg. So you don't sew the darts if you're making the wide leg. You do if you're making this tapered leg. And I think it makes the coolest shape, uh, leg shape for the pant. So if you are straight through the hips, or even not, if you're wanting to emphasize your hips a little bit more, this barrel leg style pant is very flattering. Um, it just gives, it just depends on body parts that you're trying to emphasize in order to balance out other body parts, or just you want to emphasize because you like that part of your body, whatever it might be. But a barrel leg is perfect for that, and that is what this taper creates, kind of a barrel leg. So this helps me balance my lower body up with my upper body. So I think it helps create a waist on me and makes my top part not look so, it makes me look not so top heavy um, as I can look in like a skinny legged pant. So the pants feature these wonderful deep, deep pockets. It has actually pleats in the front, but they get, they're sewn down up to a certain point. Um, and I know pleats can definitely strike fear into some people, especially people that live through pleats the first time around, but I actually don't mind them. And I do not have a flat stomach. I definitely have a mama pooch, but I actually kind of like the shape that they give. So it's just kind of, you know, whatever you're kind of into. Um, I, I really like the pleats, so that is my preference. Um, it's got a zip fly. Um, I did a snap at the front of mine because I was using uh, faux leather, or pleather, or vegan leather, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I did a snap instead of a, I knew a buttonhole would not work in this fabric. So I did a snap and I like the way, I think snaps go well with the leather and you know, as well. Belt loops, nice, um, waistband and then it's got a yoke in the back with uh, sewn on patch pockets in the back. Um, so a really just a lovely straightforward pant pattern. I had zero troubles getting this to fit. Um, I made, let's see, my hips right now are a 40. My waist is like a 33-ish. Some, that it, my waist fluctuates wildly throughout the course of the day, but um, I'm noticing that that's like good to cinch me in a little bit at my waist so that it can anchor my pants, number one. So I went with the size 16. So the size, my 40 inch hip, and I picked my size base mostly on my hip, put me at the size 16. Cause I think a 14 was like a 38 and a half inch hip or something, but the 40 put me at the 16. So I decided to go ahead and make the 16. Also, I knew that I could just make a straight 16 and it would fit me fine in the waist. The waist um, finish measurement was a little less than my waist, but I like that because then it, it anchors it for me. Um, I don't like ease in my waist for my pants or my skirts because I don't have hips to keep things up. So if, I, if anything's kind of baggy on the waist, they fall down on me. So in order for things to sit where they need to be, I, um, I need uh, the, the pants to really hug in tight at my waist. Um, so I made the straight size 16 and I think these fit really, really well. Um, I did scoop out a little bit in the back crotch curve, which is something I do just because of the shape of my butt. I have a lot of, a lot of, uh, area to go over. So while I, my butt is narrower and this, when I put on weight, my butt doesn't go out, doesn't go this way. It goes out this way. <laughs> So um, anyway, so I often need just a little bit more length for it to go from my waist and to curve around my butt and to make it into the crotch curve. So by scooping out the deep part of that crotch curve, just like quarter to three eighths of an inch, it gives me that extra room that I need and you don't have to adjust anything anywhere else. And I know that's counterintuitive um, as fitting because it seems like you're taking away from the pattern. So surely you're making things smaller, but that's not the case when it comes to crotch curves and underarms. <laughs> seems you're actually scooping the fabric out so you have more room for your body in those areas. So um, that is the only alteration that I made to these um, other than length. I shortened the legs by an inch and then I ended up taking an extra inch off the hem before I hemmed them up and I hemmed them up, um, I don't know, like five eighths of an inch, three quarters of an inch. I also left things raw because this is pleather and it didn't need to, it's not gonna fray. And I did not want to try this. Sh don't put this through your serger. It will, your serger will not like you. <laughs> um, but I think that that worked out really, really well. But those are the only alterations I made. I didn't mess with the rise or anything like that. So um, maybe I could have gone down to, cause there's a quite a bit of ease in the hips on this just cause of the style of the pant. 
Um, I maybe could have gone down to a 14 and graded up to a 16 at the waist, but honestly, I'm very comfortable in these, and so I kind of think I made the right decision. Again, slash pockets that are nice and deep. I um, used some of that Batik cotton for my um, pocket lining. So I really like a nice stable cotton for uh, my pockets. It just gives a little bit more stable pocket. And then obviously self fabric for the back because that showed um, on the outside of the pants. Now let's talk about fabric. This is the, um, it is a Minerva core range. I can't remember now if it's called soft faux leather or supple faux leather. But I bought this in two colors. I bought it in, this is called tan, and it actually comes across a lot more orange on um, screen, but I, it's tan. Like I feel like, I mean, it's a warm tan, but it is definitely brown. Like it's not, I don't, it don't, doesn't feel orangey to me. I mean, it's a camel color, but it doesn't feel orange to me. Um, love it. It has worked so well for the pants, and I also have it in a, the warm red color that they've got. Um, I've not made that up yet, but it's being made up this week, and you will hear more about that here soon. Um, but i very impressed. I kind of bought this to try it out, just to kind of, faux leather can be hard. Like some can be very stiff and more appropriate for bags or upholstery and that sort of thing, whereas others are definitely more garment suited, and I would say this is, def this is more garment suited. It's backed in this wonderful, like, um, it almost feels like a brushed, like a cotton almost. I don't know, really know what it is. I'm sure it's a pole. I don't know. I don't know what it's backed in, but it's very comfortable against the skin. So you don't feel like you're wearing plastic. Um, I didn't finish any of my seam allowances. I left everything raw because, again, I didn't want to put stuff through my serger, but I top stitched. You know, I did a lot of jean top stitching on this fabric, so that helps keep those um, seam allowances down, and um, you also can't press these. So, top stitching is your friend when working with any kind of pleather. Also, um, Teflon foot or roller foot also your friend to help feed through your sewing machine so that things don't stick. Um, the Teflon foot works great because then the foot wasn't sticking on the pleather when I was doing my top stitching. So that was wonderful. I used the regular same Guterin Mara 100 thread that I would use for anything else. Um, used that for the top stitching as well, worked great. Used a leather needle, that was wonderful. Um, and then uh, the other thing, Double stick, like wonder tape. So um, the double stick, real narrow double stick tape is wonderful when you're working with pleather. I put it on the hem of the pants to, um, to kind of press up and to hold it basically. So I could, it was kind of what I used for pressing. So then I could, you know, sew things, for instance, the hem, sew those in place. I used it on the waistband when I was folding that under. Um, I put some of that double stick tape down so that I could then sew things in place and it would um, hold it for me. And I also used it quite a bit when I was putting my zipper in. And um, you know, it just helps things, you know, stick. So that, cause you can't press. So that is, yeah, the Wonder Tape is wonderful. And you can, Dritz makes it. I mean, it's just a lovely little um, invention. And I used a ton of this, of it on these pants. And yeah, ease frustration. I had zero frustration. So, highly recommend the fabric, highly recommend the pattern. It was a really great experience working with both of them, and now I have a really fun pair of pants. Again, will I reach for these, you know, a lot? Probably not, but enough, because they're a statement piece, but they're enough that they make a very interesting statement piece. I wore them, the outfit that you that I showed you um, for the Sew the Luck, I wore that to church, although I didn't wear it with the heels because we have snow on the ground. So it looks just as good with my lug sole boots, my um, higher shafted lug sole boots. Um, so that's what I had it paired on with church today because we do have snow on the ground right now. But I think in the fall, it would be wonderful with the nude heels. Um, loafers, this would be really good. Um, I like a little bit of skin showing, either zero skin showing or, you know, some ankle showing. Um, that's kind of my favorite with this style of pant. So it worked well with the boots. I also have a pair of um, kind of sock booties that go up a little bit higher that um, I think would be beautiful on this. But again, I didn't want to fall in the snow. So one sole boots it was today. But I think there's a lot of, of footwear options that I could pair with this. Honestly, sneakers. Sneakers would be really cute with this look as well. You could pair them with um, a sweatshirt, throw on your sneakers, and you could go you know, watch a kid's game. And because it is pleather, so it's not breathable, 
it keeps you nice and warm. So it was perfect for the snowy day <laughs> we had today at church. Um, and they're very comfortable to wear. I didn't feel like things were sticking when I was walking. It didn't sound like I was wearing plastic. So yeah, I'm a big fan of this and I'm excited to make um, my next garment in the same fabric, different color as well. It worked really well and it's nice and thin so it goes through your machine easily. Um, yeah, big fan of the fabric and the patterns. So there you have it guys, the first so along of this kind of ready to wear um, video that I did on Friday. I have a couple more looks planned that I'd like to make from that haul, so stay tuned for that. Try and space them out a little bit better. You know, I did two so alongs in a week, or over the course of two weeks, I guess, um, which is, I like to space things out, a little different content, um, a little bit better, but to be honest, I'm still living in chaos at the moment. <laughs> So that's what I had and decided I'm just going to go ahead and I, I've made those up. Go ahead and put that out. But things that are coming up for you to watch for. I have my first, I'm filming this on Sunday. You're watching it on Tuesday. I have my first sewing machine class tomorrow. Very excited about that. Learning my new Bernina machine. Um, so that's very exciting. I have my Distachify. My Distachify order has come in for this month. It is amazing. I can't wait to show you the fabrics. And um, I am currently sewing the two garments for my December fabrics. So I can't wait to show you guys those two pieces as well. So that'll be coming up um, hopefully next week. So which would be the very end of January. That's kind of the, um, the goal. But I do have a lot going on in the background this week with things that you just can't see yet, but will be coming. So definitely hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because there's a lot of really amazing stuff coming up first quarter here for Tomcat Stitchery. I'm very excited about it. And hopefully it's things that get you guys excited as well. <sighs> Parker Ponty, that will be coming, that so long is coming at some point. Um, just need to get my room finished so that I can easily film some sew alongs and I really need for that to happen. So <laughs> again, fingers crossed that we can get this room finished here really quickly. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys again on Friday. Have a good week, get some sewing in and I'll see you then. Bye.